same book as yesterday. We're going to open our Bibles in Judge chapter 6. Judge 6. Judge 6. Verse 15. Judge 6.15 says the following. Oh. Let's begin from 14. Vai nessa tua força e livrarás a Israel das mãos dos Midianitas. Porventura não te enviei eu? E ele lhe disse, Ai, Senhor meu, com que livrarei a Israel? Eis que o meu milheiro é o mais pobre em Manassés, e eu o menor na casa de meu pai. E o Senhor lhe disse, porquanto eu hei de ser contigo, tu ferirás aos medianitas como se fossem um só homem. E ele disse, se agora tenho achado graça aos teus olhos, dá-me um sinal de que, é, de que és o que comigo falas. Amém? Vamos colocar sentados. Seated. Brethren, every time that we emphasize a topic and it is repeated many times, approached, it is because we need the complete understanding from each one of us. When a teaching is shared, this teaching needs to produce an effect. It needs to cause that in us uh, we uh, a change may start. So now let me give you an example. We're going to Miami and there on I-95 and then in a while we see a sign that plays such and such there is a problem there is a car crash then you begin to to have become more alert then you see another sign the accident is is closer so then you begin to think oh is it possible that i should go through this traffic or should i go to try it? a different route to get there get a shortcut so it is this is important so when the message of the Lord is brought when the Holy Spirit begin to approach a topic in our lives it is necessary that quickly we place our lives in God's author and we begin to apply the teaching that the Lord has given. Because when we begin to apply the teaching in our lives, we will see the, the result. So it's not worth for us to be here, service after service, you praying at home, or you seeking the Lord, and you not sleeping, coming early on the early dawns and coming to the meetings and going to a visitation. And the Holy Spirit is speaking and God revealing himself to you and the Holy Spirit showing to you the way, what you need to do, and then you ignoring it. It is not good because it shows to God and to any of our souls that you are ignoring, ignoring God's will and that only your will is important in your life. Here, the Midianites, when they, they were, I, I can say, they were slaving the people of, of God. The Midianites, they acted targeting the weakness of the people. 
while the people of Israel was geared toward the Lord, well, whenever the people of Israel, in the whole history of Israel, when they were seeking the Lord, hearing God's voice, God never allowed them to be defeated. God has always confirmed victory. The history of Israel repeats itself every time that they forsook the Lord, every time that they forsook their commitment with having God of Israel as their only God, God allowed the en their enemies to come and shame Israel. And now we see here who the, were the Midianites. Can anybody tell me where this nation came from? These people come, came from? Yes? Anyone? So let's continue. The Midianites. When Abraham, when Sarah dies, Abraham, Abraham, he gets married with Keturah. So then Midian is, it was born. And then the Midianite people came from there. So the Midianites, they were relatives of Jacob. They were relatives of Isaac. They were relatives of the Israelites. They were only raised away from the the life with Abraham, but afterward the Midianites they came up and they rise up against the people of God. So what does the Lord show to us through this? That many times when we abandon what is close to us and that becomes a great enemy in our lives. Sometimes we allow something that's very close, even a, broad, a friend, a relative, a co-worker, uh, a boyfriend, a girlfriend that is not in God's project, that don't have the same fellowship as you, that don't have the same understanding regarding Jesus and the gospel and salvation. Sometimes we allow those things to rise up and become our enemies because what the enemy wants the most is to destroy our relationship with God the world is out there the world is there they are very well organized to kill us don't think that you'll be an exception. The enemy rises up. Isn't it true? The enemy of our souls is ready and organized to destroy man's opportunity to be saved. If, if, if man is in the world, it's easier for the enemy of our souls. It's easier for the Midianites. It's easier for the Amalekites. It's easier for the Philistines. It's easier. But for us who are in God's presence, He also rises up against us. And the intention of the enemy of our souls is to starve us. And exactly here, the Midianites, they, they targeted the weakness, the weak point of Israel on what was a matter of life for them. They did everything. They would go there and steal it. The wheat, the animals, everything that was their sustenance. Why is that? To kill men with hunger. So that men in this difficult situation, withering, hungry, men may seek anything to satisfy their hunger. And that's what happened today when man is in the situation in which he are and the disappointment and the frustration they seek anything and some may say that the hunger is the best seasoning <laughs> when you are very hungry we eat anything we don't choose stuff when you are hungry 
that could be here, the, the food that is least appetizing without seasoning, doesn't look good. You eat this with gusto and you even ask for more. <laughs> so hunger is the greatest seasoning. And that's what the enemy of our souls does this those to does to man, especially with the youth. Leading youth to live a period away from God completely. Gideon here, he was chosen by God. And why was he chosen? Because he discovered something that was prophetic. I'm not going to speak about his choice and what he, the, the test that he made with God, but we're going to speak today what he was not spoken yesterday. Because this teaching is very rich. It's impossible for us to extinguish all the, the explain all the blessings there are in this study. So Gideon, uh, the angel saw the angel saw Gideon. It is important to emphasize this. It's not difficult for us to say this. Angel is angel. Angel is a mess messenger from God. And you can say in a vision I saw an angel. And this angel came, sent by God. There is angel has not uh, 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 he has not, uh, has not, has not doesn't have any free will but he's a saint uh, being from God and God when God orders orders an angel he comes to help us and uh, the, the sister or a brother when they have a vision they don't need to be like uh, you know touchy no trying to explain it's an angel I saw a being I don't know for sure it's an angel you can say if you saw an angel you can say that you saw an angel there's no problem in speaking about it but when this angel appears to Gideon he said you are a, valid, a man of valor because he had discovered what was prophetic and you see what was the stand of Gideon from that point forward the whole experience of Gideon it all points out to Jesus, his, his whole life. Chapter 6 and 7 speaks clearly of God's project in the life of the youth, the project of God in the life of a man, God's project in the life of, of our sisters, and the project of God in the entire church. From the moment that he chooses to work the wheat, inside of the wine press on the wine press that's what I said that's why I said but man it's hungry everything is is valid uh, word of God mixed with uh, man's idea mixed with clay and on a, on a threshing floor it's okay when man doesn't have an understanding of the word when he doesn't have understand of the doctrine when he doesn't read the Bible, he allows himself to be led by any doctrine, any thought. There is a woman out there. She was considered a prophet of a certain denomination. She was the only one that could have vision. She was only the only one that could be used with spiritual gifts. And they don't believe in, in spiritual gifts, but she be they believed in her. Until the moment that she said, Jesus will return in a specific day. It was a great disappointment. Because she failed. And many speak about her to this day. She is a spiritual leader. She's a phenomenon. Very well known. In a religious group. But was this failure that she made. Whenever something comes the word of God when it comes mixed with man's reasoning and man's concepts it's dangerous and when you do not know the Bible when you have not had your experience of reading the word in the spirit you cannot discern this that's why it's so important the word of God to be in the wine press because you will have the taste of the wine He's not going to have the taste of the clay of the ground. Whenever you work the wheat on the threshing floor, 
you always uh, grains of sand will come with your wheat but when when you see feel the gospel live in the presence of the Holy Spirit there's nothing like this it is perfect there is no failure there's no disappointment when you are geared towards God when your experience was with the Lord when experience was with the Holy Spirit when your experience was with Jesus you accepted Jesus God spoke to you God made an indelible mark in your life the Holy Spirit baptized you and you felt the touch of the Holy Spirit in any in a specific moment of our life on a, that service you with the Lord in fellowship the Holy Spirit visited you and this is gospel in the Spirit this is what it is to live in God's presence and how they didn't live and that's what we live and that's what Pastor J.D.O.T. always is there in that battle you no know, correcting fighting and demanding of us and why is that because that was his experience and he as a leader for us as a reference to us he had this commitment he this responsibility to relay what he experienced and he continues to experience because he knows that his time is is short and more than most important of all he has this battle with him and the Lord because we receive many riches what the Lord has done in the last 50 years is a miracle it is a miracle when we speak about the Martha Church in the last century that's hard, funny saying, saying that. The last century, it's... <laughs> Can you imagine? I was born in the last century. Complicated. <laughs> Are you 100 years old? <laughs> no, it's... Let's, let's speak about decades. Who was born in this century? Who is like 20... Just 20... You don't even know what a, what last century is, these people. You can imagine one. You don't even know 1989. What is that? I don't know this. This is like 2000 years, 2000 onwards. Every, every time I, I start filming a document, I spend almost... Oh, I feel a document looking for my birthday. I like two minutes going down on the list. Today is like 2010, 2015. They may have removed my my year of birth. <laughs> so when we speak about Maranatha a few decades ago, nobody imagined, humanly speaking, but the Lord had already a project. When when the Lord sh has shown in the presbytery, when we were thinking about reaching the world, what did the Lord show? Who can remember in the presbytery? Who? Well, there is another spiritual gift that the Lord gave clearly in the presbytery that the way for us to reach the world was, was that uh, pulpit made out of gold. Remember this vision? The Lord showed in the presbytery that the only ways for us to reach the world was through a pulpit of gold. Oh boy, so then we need to ask for uh, tithing, increase the, the tithing because pulpit of gold is riches. No, that's what the Lord discerned. Riches is the revealed word. Our riches is this. Our wheat being worked inside of the wine press. And it is through this gift that the Lord has shown about three and four decades ago that we will be able to reach the place where we are today. Because our wheat is being worked on inside of the wine press. And this is our riches. This is our blessing. And Gideon, when he finds out about this, he takes a stand out as completely radical. And radical of a servant of God 
Personally, when we begin to go through 18, 19, you begin to see that he offered to the Lord, made an offering to the Lord. He turned to the Lord with gratitude to God. He made an offering to God, and his offering was received. And he placed in his heart also that whatever he was leaving, his father in his house, there was an author that was made to and that the historic judge was uh, Baal, of course. The god, the pagan god, Baal. And the house of Gideon was an altar that was built to, to Baal. What did Gideon do? He went there and broke the whole thing. He broke the altar to Baal and made a new altar to the Lord and burned and sacrificed a, 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 a bull so the so altar was broken. Um, now verse 23 and 24 and 25. 25 it says the following. So Gideon took the, the second care for seven years and breaks the altar of Baal, who belonged to his father. He cuts the, the bush that were next to it and edifies an altar to the Lord in this strong place, in a convenient place, and takes the second cow and offer it as an holocaust with the wood that he, they had cut from the, the forest. So Gideon did Castan. He 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 chose he broke uh, he cut the, the forest. Human reason. A lot of people. He speaks about many people human culture, human reason, and he burnt, sacrificed, he killed the bull, and he, he sacrificed the flesh, man's strength, and Gideon faced all of this, and this should be also our stand, the stand of the youth, the stand of the man, the worker, the usher, the deacon, uh, the pastor, the anointed, the sisters, the teachers, why is that? Because we need to let, let go of the only thing that is visible in our, our lives. The only thing that is visible in our lives is the presence of God. Everything that is linked, that is connect, connecting us to the old man, everything that connects us to idolatry and the things of the world, everything that connects us to, to does not come from God, needs to be undone needs to fall to the ground. The forest needs to fall to the ground. The altar, what prevents what is between us and God, the altar is made to an idol, to idolatry. What prevents us from going to God needs to fall to the ground. And that's what Gideon did. And he built there an altar to the Lord. And here we see in the sequence that he, he almost, they almost tried to kill Gideon. Everybody was infuriated when they found out on the following day that the uh, altar to bear was destroyed. And all of this, all this trial, that difficulty, and then Gideon, because he was seeking God's blessing. And God spoke to Gideon, do not be afraid. Because I am with you. Gideon was no longer alone. Gideon had God's presence. And many times we need to overcome this. Sometimes, Many times we need to overcome our fear. Many times we need to let go of the things of the world. Go astray from concerns. May I be right? Do I really need to let go of these things? Because it's not worth it. When Gideon took this stand, it was because he was already seeing God's presence in his life. And it's not worth it for you to pray to the Lord on letting go of things. Who amongst of us here came here, burnt an idol or, or something like that? Who has had an experience? Many, many here. Who was from the Catholic Church and came here, and came here, 
They saw that they had a kitchen with an idol. Has have we ha had this experience? Oh, the sister down there, she had. There, are a few <laughs> there are even people that kicked the the, the saint, kicked the saint and uh, an idolatry. It was it was in public in front of the TV. It created a great problem. People trying to stone him. <laughs> so it is not worth for you to let go of something if your heart still remains there. When Gideon took this stand, why was was he like that? Because in his heart was already the blessing of God. Gideon didn't do that because he was forced. He didn't do that because somebody asked him. No. He was touched by the Spirit. And when you need to let go of something in order for you to be an instrument in God's hands, firstly, you need to take this out of your heart. Not possible for you to break this. Oh, I like this so much. It's so pretty. Oh boy. But the pastor asked me to throw it away. My father is telling me to throw it away. But boy, but I want to keep it in my pocket and say that I threw it away. It's not, it's not going to work. The first thing that you need to do is to take it out of your heart. Why Israel? Why the Hebrew took 40 years to come to the promised land? Because the Lord needed to remove Egypt from their heart. They left Egypt. They, they saw the miracles. They saw all of it. And the Lord operated their manna, column of fire, all of it. The person of God, the water. But Egypt was still in their hearts. Any problem. Oh, they would say, oh, Moses, what a problem. What did you do? In Egypt was better. In Egypt, we had onions to eat. We had a cemetery to bury the people. Moses, what, what, what have you done? We don't even have a place to die, Moses. Because your heart was still geared towards Egypt. It left Egypt, but Egypt had not left our hearts. But many times when we, the youth, we need to let go of s some things. What is not pleasing the Lord? What is preventing God's heart? Do this, whatever it might be. It is a friendship. Is it a friendship from the world? It's not worth it. Not worth it. Let's be clear. It's not worth it. There's no fellowship between the light and darkness. If you have a great friend out there, you have a, a person that is very close to you, but that person does not have the gospel in the same way as you are, if he has not had an experience like he, that you had, sooner or later this will, will cause you problems. It's not possible for us to say anything different. You need to be obedient. Gideon did exactly what was in his heart. Because God placed in his heart not what he, what he wanted to do. It was not the father the man or somebody said. No, it was because the Lord testified in his heart. And many times we need to let go of things that do not come from the Lord. There's no purpose for us not to do this. If you are you, you want to have a professional life, a sentimental life, then you might say, oh, well, the guy is in the world. Everything works out for, for that friend. Okay, he's already here. He's in the world, lives in sin. He already has document, has a good job. He already speaks English. And I've been living here for 20 years. I don't have any of it. How, why things of the world people that are in the world things are easier I don't know I don't know everything is in God's hands there's a song that says uh, what uh, ungodly many times they, what is the song look for 
There's a psalm that says something like this. And many times we hear uh, we are in difficulty, and many times nothing works. But look, this is life. It is the experience of Gideon. The enemy. Don't be envious of the ones who. Are. Psalm 27. Psalms 27, 37. Look, look at the text. Psalms 27, Psalm 27, Psalm 37, so let's go and read it, what's that, Psalm 37, did you find it, look, fret not thyself because of the evil doers, neither be thou even envious of the ones who practice iniquity. Sometimes you uh, you are born in the church, and then you you abandon the church, and then you are harvesting the benefits of this life. What is what is more important? Harvesting benefits for this life to this death, or harvesting benefits that will lead to salvation, to eternal life? Don't be envious. Well, as as uh, as outrageous and frustrating it might be. Do not be envious of this. Wait in the Lord. Don't be hasty. Don't jump the gun. Don't. Your blessing will come. Trust in the Lord. And get indeed all of this because the Holy Spirit testified on it. And the stand of Gideon was what we saw at the end. The Lord prepared Gideon. Very well, but uh, in the beginning, when Gideon, he received the, the, this, he, when his stand pleases the Lord even more, and God confirms what he asks, vanity could have come we, he might have thought oh I'm better then he said I am the smallest one the harvest is the smallest one I am the smallest one in my father's family and this is the way we should behave because the smaller we are the greater is the operation of the Holy Spirit in our lives the more you disappear you the more you disappear, your usher and deacon, the greater is God's glory. Don't try to, to take for yourself the glory and the benefits of this life. Don't try to want for yourself any type of the benefit that may cause you to be connected more to this life and bring produces more, producing more roots to this life. So Gideon, we're going to speak about I'm going to speak about chapter 7, the beginning of chapter 7, where he speaks about the whole process, uh, the war, how God has chosen his soldiers, and 32,000 men. Oh, Gideon thought, wow, 32,000 men? Now God is with me, and the, the strength of man is out now with me. He may have thought, I imagine, in spite of the fact that the word says that the Midianites, there were so many that the camels, the camels alone, they could not have numbered. Can you imagine the size of the army? If they could not even count the, the camels, imagine the soldiers. So Gideon began to face this with 30, 32,000 men. But then God told him, oh, there are too many people here. That's not how it is. Send the people go. So 22,000 left immediately and then left there were 10,000 left and he didn't thought well, if, if 
God said that we're going to win. 10,000 should be enough. And then something else happened. Out of 32,000, uh, on the second turn, God asked for, for them to leave, for most to leave, and there were only 300 left. God made a test and the one and told all the 10,000 to go to drink water. The ones who knelt down to drink is set apart, and only 300. The two and one step was 22,000. No, no, it was 22,000 all in at once. So you can see how I'm going to speak about what is going to happen. This is going to be for a next next message. I'm not going to spoil it. This message here for for three days. Chapter seven has revelation for three more days. So I just want to stay here on this part. So then you may speak to me. Oh, wait a minute. So it is possible that the, the blood of Jesus, the pleading for the blood of Jesus has no effect. Yes, it does. God forgives. But there is a consequence. You understand? There is power in the blood of Jesus. Power to deliver, to forgive the sins, to reset our death with the Lord. Every time that we come to the house of the Lord, every time that you nail down at, at your house, whatever you are, and you plead for the power of the blood and present the power of the blood of Jesus in your life, our sins are forgiven. Yes. It is not something that we can say against it all. So that is easy. You can see them come here, can ask for figures on now it's easy. Just need to sin and then plead, right? But but also the same thing needs to happen. Letting go is when sin hurt causes pain in you. The practice of sin the Holy Spirit is the only one that can convince you of, of your sins. God forgives, forgives, yes. But there is a consequence of sin which is dangerous. Today we see this war between the Jewish people with uh, the Arab people. Yesterday, from Saturday to Sunday, we saw Iran attacking. You know how serious it is? Iran bombarding Israel. This is very serious. This and this war is millionaire of the Arab people. You know where it came from? What what this animosity was born. Exactly. They are both children of Abraham. One is the son of Abraham with Sarah. Remember? God promised Sarah to get pregnant and she was 80 years old and nothing happened and she takes uh, 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 one of her servants and at the time it was socially accepted and she did that in haste and she offered her servant to go to lay down with Abraham and Ishmael was born and then Sarah gets pregnant. And then Isaac came up, the son of the promise. And she quickly repents and convinces Abram to send uh, our servant with her son Ishmael away. And that's where the Arab people came from. And the Arab people are descendants of Ishmael. And today we see this, God forgave. Yes, it's, it's all right. Abram went to heaven. I believe that he went. Sarah went to heaven. I believe she went. Isn't it true? But now, what is the consequence of sin? It's here to this day. That's where I want to get to. God forgave sin. Yes, forgave. Even we we cannot uh, go against this. Oh, but then it's so oh, easy. It's not anyone can do that. You sin and ask for forgiveness. God forgive and then you go again and, and, and sin. But there will come a moment 
where you'll be caught on the wrong way. Second Peter 2 says the phone. I can't hear what he's saying. Second Peter 2 21 says the phone. It would be better for you not to know the way of righteousness because when they knew they went astray from the command that was given to them. It was, think about someone that know the Lord and continues in sin. And 22 says the following, in this way that one proverb should be said, the dog went back to his vomit and the pork went, uh, was after being washed, went to the pigsty. And it continues sin, it's a practice of sin. It's not possible for us not to sin. Don't, um, don't understand me incorrectly. If you sin and just in, in thought, you may sin, sin acts. Everything is sin. There's no way for you to. Just because we are alive here, we are sinning. Why is that? Because sin is in man's nature. Man's origin is sinful. We sin because we are sinners. Isn't it true? You understand this? You don't speak Portuguese because you learn Portuguese. You speak Portuguese because you're Brazilian. It is natural. An American may speak Portuguese, but you learn it later. But whoever is Brazilian, the fluence, the language is Portuguese. Same way with the Americans. Americans speak English because they're American. So man, sins because they are sinners. We cannot run away from this. So, but it is power in the, the blood of Jesus to operate. But the practice of sin is what is dangerous. Amen. Pick up the microphone. Or Elias is going to complain. If we have sinned in a voluntary way, after having received the knowledge of the truth, we no longer have sacrificed for the sins in a voluntary way. When you sin, when you run towards the sin, you have the whole day to think about it. There's no way for me not to do that. So you are planning. You are programming that you're in a voluntary way we went there there is that sin the big sin small sin big sin is the one that kills and you know, this is not true the one that goes on the the news on the newspaper uh, committing a crime but this is not true there's no size of sin but a volunteer sin means that you are canceling but Jesus did for you. You're canceling it. Isn't it true? Amen. Anything else? Anyone has a question? John 8, 11, they said, when the Lord speaks about, he said to the one, go and see no more. He forgave her and left a message. Do not remain sinning. Isn't it true? Do not remain in the practice of sin. Do not remain in the practice of sin. Any question from the youth? Amen. Everybody's so serious here. <laughs> Why did this guy say so many things today? Isn't it true? But that's what it is. The word needs to produce an effect. Isn't it true? It needs to produce transformation. May the Lord tonight do this. This is our desire. This is our intention that the Word of God, that you may carry the Word of God and you may live and apply the Word of God in our life. Amen. I invite the church to stand up. There is no other question. 
I'm going to bring this service to an end right now. So now let's sing a song. This is a question from the part of the Lord. Where has been your struggle? What is the area in your life where the Midianites are seeing a weakness and are investing in it? Speak to the Lord in prayer. We're going to pray. I'd like to invite the ushers and deacons to be here at the front. We're going to pray to the Lord because this is the invitation from the Holy Spirit. God wants to strengthen the weakened areas in your spiritual life. Maybe it is lack of prayer. Maybe it's lack of obeying the Lord. Maybe you're not reading the Word enough. Maybe you are not applying what it, the Lord is showing in your life. There are people like like um, snake, stiff, stiff neck people. People that <laughs> the Holy Spirit shows and they pray is this and that and the person is still stubborn they do not apply in their life you are only delaying the operation of God in your life the Midianites they are they are taking advantage they are stealing everything it could have been really far ahead but still here backsliding no sank in mud why why is that because the midnight they're attacking they're investing on that spot you should have been really far ahead but you're still here the victory the lord wanted to give you months ago to this day you were delaying the operation of the holy spirit exactly bail has not been broken yet the author of bail has not been broken yet what is in your heart Preventing your fellowship with God, taking God's place, is still here. Throw it away. You need to do this. I need to do my part. You need to do yours. And God will operate. So now we are going to pray for the ones who need. See. 
to receive the means, strengthening, even they need to have the boldness on the part of God to overcome their weakness and begin to live in spirit. So now whoever wants they can kneel down at the ushers and deacons can be here. We're going to pray with the lay with lay of hands. That's what it is. You don't need to look to who's kneeling down. Look first to you. Whoever knelt down. Because the application of the word of God needs to be in your lives. Not in the life of your your brother and sister. Sometimes we, we have this this habit. Oh, uh, the Lord is, uh, the pastor is preaching and that person still has not kneeled down, knelt down. Just concentrate on yourself. Pray to God. My brethren, my servants, the position where you are right now is because God's call. And the word that I have tonight through my anointed one is one alone. I am with you. Servers, servants of valor. Your struggle, the weakness, pour it out onto my author because I will strengthen like I have done to this day the life of each one of you. I bless you, giving you wisdom, filling you with the blessing of my spirit. And to my sister, my daughter, that came here tonight, feeling that you were being carried. And my answer is the blessing of my spirit into your home. And whatever you feel weak, I strengthen you and to you my youth. You, my daughter, that also thinks that there is no meaning in being in my presence. Many times you think like that. I speak to you at this moment to show to you that, I, that you are God, we are, I'm a God that cares for you and loves you. And to show you that the price that was paid for your life was a price of love. And where you are at this moment is the place where I want you to be and what you are asking many times without faith because you don't believe because time passed time may have passed for you my daughter but for your God the time is today and my answer is based on your you seeking me seek my word and to you, my people I speak to you because Tonight, this word is so that there may be a transformation in the minds and hearts so that you may walk looking towards, looking ahead, looking towards the target because your place is not, this is not here because you walk knowing that I am with you. Church, glorify my name because tonight there is a renewal as being sent from my eternity so that you may take possession of what many times have been forgotten by you but for me it's sometimes contemporary because I never forget my promises and I will be with you until the end of days Amen Lord to Jesus blessed be the name of the Lord confirm Lord your word and that the promise of the Lord may be fulfilled in our lives. And that your youth, Lord, your, your sons and daughters may be in the right position, having action in the position that Gideon had, Lord, of going geared towards you completely. Operate in us tonight is the word that we say in the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Let's, I just want to uh, send the text of Psalms. 
77. 37, I, I think, yeah. Psalms 30, 37. You can see the vision marked, Mark. The Lord was showing that we were enlisted all to an army. And the beginning of, of the work was here in, in this meeting today. And interesting that at the end of the meeting, we had already received our uniform, I received our weapons, and until when we heard, we have many plans and strategy of war that were planned in our minds. And we thought, wow, that's how I'm going to win my battle. And after the meeting, we recognized our strategy was very flawed. They would not work out in any way. So then the Lord himself called us into a great table. He opened it up like a big map with all the strategies that he had already uh, planned. And he would, was pointing us the strategies. And we see the strategies of the Lord, like in the book of Judges, in a historical way being revealed to our eyes in a prophetic way. And we learned and we understood that in that way, we would never be defeated. But we left here confident and uh, very happy because the Lord was guaranteeing us a victory because he revealed us these strategies of war. God has a project. And the project of God is completely efficient. The strategy of the Lord there's no one that can destroy or change because God is unchangeable. He's the same God yesterday, today, and it will be eternally. Now, Psalm 73 speaks about this. Psalm 73. Truly, God is good towards Israel for the ones who are clean heart. But as for me, my feet were almost gone. My steps were well night sleeping. For I was envious of the foolish when I saw the prosperity of the wicked. For there are no bands in their death, but their strength is firm. They are not in trouble as other men. So now go six, O eight seven eight nine so seventy three the seventeen seventeen seventy ends like this until I went into the sanctuary of God then understood it I I there end. So, when we are in God's presence, we discern because that it's better to be in God's presence. Because the end of the proud, the end of the ones who are in the world, is terrible. Until I enter into the sanctuary of God, then understood I understood I their end. Well, don't be envious of the prosperity of the evil doers because God is going to open his door for you the door that God opens nobody will close glorify the Lord you are struggling today yes but tomorrow you will overcome it he's going to be in God's sanctuary it's not going to be out there it's not going to be like fighting out there trying to imitate doing the same doing this here and there lying here and lying there no wait on the Lord let the Lord act whoever is in God's sanctuary is covered and this is God's dwelling amen I'm going to speak about uh, dating for the youth in the ne next meeting this month of the youth they're going to invest on the youth we're going to have events such as this going to have events like this, we're going to have visitation, you're going to make an investment to you. This month I'm not going anywhere. I'm going to st stay here. We're going to work with the youth. We're going to have many events, special events for the youth. Amen.
Uh, you're going to have a, a, a lunch. Luciano is going to prepare a lunch. Amen, my friend. Is it over? Benção apostólica. It's not with me. When was it going to? On the May 5th? May 5th? May 5th? We're going to be going in Sarasota. So the brand. Orlando. Amen. Let's stand up and bring the chapter close. The grace of the Lord, the Savior Jesus Christ, the sweet and tender and consolation and the gift of the Holy Spirit may be poured out to all of us now and forevermore. Amen. Pai do Senhor, peace of the Lord, my brother.